of the Christian Medical College and Hospital at Bellore, South India. And a splendid opportunity for service. My grandfather came to India in response to an appeal after reading a leaflet given to him by one of his patients. This leaflet depicted the urgent need of millions in India who were without medical aid and desperately needed help. Dr. John Scudder and his wife dedicated themselves to the medical and evangelistic work in India. They gave their entire lives and their seven sons, who all became doctors, and two daughters came back to India. I am the daughter of the youngest son, John. I was born in India and lived here until five years of age. During the Great Famine in 1875 in South India, it was reported that three million people died of starvation. Those were dark days with suffering and death on all sides, and a great impression was made on my young life. At the end of the famine, my father and mother took me to America. Even as a child, I st started most em stated most emphatically that I could never return to India. I could not forget the terrible impression of suffering and death. My parents returned but left their children in America to continue their education. Some years later, my mother was taken ill and father wrote it asking me to return to India and be with them for a time. When I was preparing to return, my many friends said, we thought you were never going back to India. I said, my mother is ill and needs me, and when she is better, I will come home. I will never remain in India. Little did I realize at that time that God wanted me to do with my life and how he was going to lead me back to India and to this great medical work. I settled in Tindavanam in South India and did what I could to relieve my mother and became specially interested in the Hindu girls' schools and the Sananas. One evening, I was sitting alone in my room, reading when I heard steps on the veranda, and soon a knock. I went to the door and saw a Brahmin gentleman. I asked him if I could do anything for him. Oh, yes, Amma, he said. Desperately, I so need your help. My wife, only a young girl of 14, is dying in childbirth. The Baba women can do nothing for her, and she may die. And Amma, she is such a lovely girl. I heard that you'd come to India, and I thought you could help her. But I replied, I know nothing about childbirth. I cannot help you, but my father is a doctor, and I can bring him. He can save your little wife. Almost in horror, he raised his hands and bowed before me, saying, I could not take a man into my house to care for my wife. No man can look upon my wife. If you cannot come, she must die. Again and again I urged him, saying that I would come with my father and do all I could under my father's direction. It could not be done. He could not have a man deliver his wife's baby. My heart ached for him, as with tears in his eyes he sobbed, Then she must die, and oh, she is such a lovely girl. He left, and I sat down at my desk feeling de desperate. After some time, I heard steps, footsteps. Jumping up, I ran to the door, thinking that the Brahmin had returned to take my father. Instead, there stood a Mohammedan, and with the same request, he too turned away, repeating the same words, Oh, she must die. I felt I could not bear it. 
and again I heard footsteps in the same evening. Similar requests came from a third man. I hurried to my father and mother, and they were as sad as I. There was no sleep for me that night. I could not forget those three young women dying in childbirth when I could not help them. By morning, my decision was made. I could go to America, study medicine, and return to India as a doctor to try to save the lives of those who needed me. After graduating from Cornell University, New York, I arrived in Valor on the 1st of January, 1900, ready to take up work as a doctor. What marvelous changes I have seen. In 1900, Valor was a small town of about 30,000 people. There were no dispensaries, no hospitals. Today, Valor is a city of over 146,000. Today we find a large government hospital, two mission hospitals, as well as a medical college affiliated with the University of Madras, where many young men and women are being trained to serve India as MBBS doctors. Medical help is being attended to, extended to the surrounding villages. In 1900, none of the, of the villages were reached. In 1901, a Peugeot, a French motor car with one cylinder was sent to me. I imagine none of my listeners have had the privilege of riding in a one-cylinder car, and you cannot know what you have missed. But we did rejoice in this little car and made plans to visit the villages once a week with medical aid. The first way, day when we started out with our rather noisy Pugio, the people on that country road who had never seen a motor car, seeing and hearing us coming, rushed off into the field shouting, Oh, the devil is coming. We stopped the car and persuaded them to come and see. When they came, we found that nearly everyone in that group needed medical aid. Since that time, patients have come in from far distant villages with their sick and suffering ones. Now, they love those life-saving ambulances and cars. The little one-cylinder car has long ago been replaced by ambulances with doctors and nurses and evangelists bringing help and life to many. At times on those roadsides, over a thousand patients have been treated during a day. Many very needy ones have been brought to the hospital, which has 600 beds and cared for there. The Mary Tabor Shell Hospital was opened in 1901 and had 40 beds. Today there are over, often over 100 patients many lying on the veranda and on the floor. At times, as many as a hundred cataract operations have been done there in one day. Our present staff of doctors and nurses and other workers are an inspiration to all. We thank God for the way in which he has led us in the past and we look forward to an even greater future. Christian Medical College of Law for Women and Men is affiliated to Madras University and has 260 students and 235 nurses. We need those who can take up the torch of life and carry on and make Velour Medical College one of the outstanding medical institutions today and shall I say in the world, we need your love and prayers and help as never before.